Hello and welcome to Social Media Weekly, episode 24th November 2021. Social Media Weekly is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing, rehumanizing your marketing experience. My name is Sean. And I'm Jay. Uh, this week's episode is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing. Get unlimited requests for social media, banners, bunting, and logo designs from, from as low as $350 US dollars a month. Today, subscription comes with a dedicated accounts manager and designer. Terms and conditions apply. Drop us an email at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at virtualpadlers.com for a free discovery session. Yeah. Check it out. Let's move on to the news of the week, Instagram shuts Threads app. Instagram launched an app called Threads, which is essentially a stripped-down version of its full app. It focused on the ability to text close friends and keep tabs on their stories. It's kind of like Snapchat. Okay. Um, it even has an auto status mode that automatically predicts what you are doing depending on your location, check-ins, and battery status. Uh, so by now, most of you might be wondering, what is this app? Am I talking about Threads? Have you heard of this app before? Nope. Not okay. Online. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not the only one. Um, but worry not. It's closing down because it's never amounted to anything from the very beginning. Um, I've used it because at one point of time, because it was launched in 2019. Oh. And there was a time when there was a lot of this uh, getting out of social media because social media is a very toxic place and it spend, you spend too much time in it and things like that, right? Yep. So you want to reduce your reliance and time on social media while still be connected to your friends. And a lot of my friends are on Instagram. Okay. And they do a lot of Instagram DMs instead of using WhatsApp to chat for some reason because you see the post and you immediately reply to them. So mm. then you have a conversation going on, right? All right. So instead of using Instagram, I started using Threads, and it was a nice thing to use. And for it was very funny because the chat platform on Threads was actually more stable than Instagram. Hmm. Why? Be why do you say so? Because Instagram used to have this problem where, um, when you see someone text you, mm -hmm. you have a notification on the app, but when you go in there, it's not there. So you have to kill the app. You have to swipe up on your phone, kill the app, and restart the app, and then all the message will pop up. Oh, okay. So at this point of time when Instagram had a lot of these kind of bugs and uh, threads had, didn't have this kind of bugs, it worked very, very well. And I, didn't, and I didn't need to look at other people's posts. I only look at the stories of my close friends. So it's a very close-knit kind of uh, community, which I liked. Hmm. Um, so, but apparently not many people like it. Not enough people like it. So Instagram decided that it has to go. It will stop working for everyone come December 2021. Goodbye threads. Goodbye uh, threads. It, you never even knew it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice knowing and not knowing you at the same time. <laughs> but um, I guess I mean probably they should integrate how they use threads like when you message your friends and stuff like that. Probably they should learn how to use that on Instagram instead. Because sometimes don't you realize that Instagram is a little bit buggy? Yes, Instagram is buggy. Uh, but the thing about it is that Instagram's especially is chat, right? Uh, we will report about this later on, but Instagram is actually planning, Facebook is actually planning, or Meta now, they're actually planning to integrate all the chats together. Oh, okay. So they're not interested in fixing the existing chat platform or the chat, the DM platform. They are actually kind of like uh, overhaul the entire thing. Oh, okay. uh, we will talk about it later on. So maybe that's the reason why they don't really care about it right now. But in any case, I don't think they will go back to threats because I think they're over this idea of um, uh, social media, kind of like, what is it called? Not spending too much time on social media kind of thing. They want people to spend more time on social media. All right. And threats was a very story focused uh, platform. And there was a time when they were pushing for stories, but now they focus on reels mm -hmm. and reels is in Instagram. So they want people to all come back to Instagram to use reels. I mean, Hmm. I guess that's a good move mm -hmm. right now. Let's see what's going to happen in the future as well. I'm quite interested, like, what they're going to do in the future. Especially right now, they're removing threads, even though I didn't get a chance to actually look into it. But since they're going to remove it in 2021, maybe I'll just check it out for a bit. Lah. <laughs> yeah, you can just, yeah, just check it out for a bit. One thing I find which is quite interesting, also, but also quite scary, was this auto status, mm -hmm. where um, it collects all your information, it, it kind of tracks where you are and based on what, where you are, let's say if you're in a mall, it automatically says you're shopping. Mm -hmm. And if you are moving at a certain speed um, from place to place, it automatically thinks that you're driving. So it says that you're driving. 
And if you are at home, it says you're at home. I have one question. It's a dumb question. <laughs> Let's see if you're going in the toilet. Would they know that you're going in the toilet? I mean, <laughs> if your toilet is at home, then you're at home. If your toilet is okay. in the mall, then you're in the mall. So you I won't thought they were that specific, no, you know? <laughs> no, I, no, I don't think so. There is no beacon to show that they that you are in the toilet. <laughs> Nobody wants to know anyway, you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, Clubhouse rolls out auto caption. Auto close caption is coming to Clubhouse via iOS first. It's the ability to automatically show live caption whenever someone is talking on the app. It allows users to follow the content along in the text format and also improve the accessibility for those with hearing problems. Okay, guys, we're talking about this auto caption so just imagine this when you're on the platform yeah um there'll be like a let's just say you join into a room there'll be somebody speaking there'll be a black box below the group. like a subtitle yeah exactly. a subtitle bar behind it's uh, below, exactly sorry. like a subtitle yeah. bar so it's something cool but at the same time while it's a welcoming feature one can imagine the amounts of errors that will follow when needing to deal with mul- with a multitude of accents and slang it's available in English at the moment with 12 other languages in beta testing. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of issues, especially, okay, let's just put it, let's just focus on Malaysia essentially. So we speak in English, mm. but sometimes we have this thing whereby ro- Roja language, you know, whereby we integrate yes. Malay and English together. How are they going to identify those, yes. you know? That's going to be one big issue. That's what I see. Yeah. What I do think you think? Live captions has always been a big struggle. It's easy with predominantly English-speaking countries. Correct. But when you go to a place where you have a variety of languages like Europe and Asia, then it's a totally different thing altogether. Yep. And say, for example, you go to India and they say they pronounce words with V like they pronounce... W and they pronounce words with W and they pronounce with V. Why? Why is this? What a wonderful world. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can say it, you know, because I'm Indian, so it doesn't sound racist. So it's safe. And, and when <laughs> I ask it, I'm genuinely curious. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not trying to be racist. Yeah, to our, all our Indian listeners out there, don't please don't feel offended. Mm. I am Indian as well. But I have accepted Sean. You know, it's mm. completely fine, okay? <laughs> so in any case, um, I am, I think it's a good... Um, thing uh, and well Twitter actually came up with this first in the spaces and it only makes sense for Clubhouse to also do it as well and while it is slowly becoming better Mm -hmm. I think it will take a while more before the AI is properly able to do proper proper closed captions Um, yeah I, I, I guess well live closed captions YouTube has had it for ages for many many years at least five or six years but the reason why most people don't use it or hardly ever use it is because the accuracy is just so bad. Hmm. I guess so. And then this one thing I realized that I, I like this improvements um, being done in Clubhouse itself. Um, this is going to give you a small story. There was once that I actually joined a room whereby there was this kid that actually joined in as well. And we started having a conversation with him. And next thing we realized that he did not know what was our name. And then I found out that he had eyesight issue when I say ah. eyesight issue essentially He's blind mean, yep he not to say he was blind he had he what he said was he had very very minimal vision okay so I guess you know we have this fun, this group of people as well mm. which has uh, predicaments of their own yep. and I like how Clubhouse is integrating all of this and actually taking into regards to let everybody join the app essentially yes it is it is the accessibility part of these apps right all um right. You, you have closed captions because people with hearing issues or maybe you, know, you can't hear very well or if it's inconvenient for you to listen, you can read. Correct. So, and while Clubhouse is predominantly an audio platform, um, people who have eyesight issues are able to communicate with people as well. Correct. And then right now, just people which has hearing issues can join us as well. Mm-hmm. So, join us guys. It's very nice. It's fun to have conversations. Well, to be fair, we don't have a clubhouse room. It's just that join him. Yeah, I don't use clubhouse. I sometimes will be there. Like, if you see me, you see me. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> so what's your clubhouse handle? My clubhouse handle... Um, crap, I can't remember. It's been a, it's been a while since I last hopped on, hopped on into the app. Uh, find me. It's just J. <laughs> just J. Quite nice, right? Just J. 
Meta delays encrypted messages to 2023. We talked about this, about yep. the messages. Back in 2019, Meta, then Facebook, announced that it will bring all messaging apps in its social um, apps into a unified platform. It also said that it would upgrade all the messaging apps to end-to-end -end encryption level of WhatsApp. Right. So you have um, Instagram DM, you have Facebook's Messenger, you have WhatsApp, right? So I guess it's that three, yeah. Yep. Uh, this was supposed to help businesses more easily handle messaging across all its apps while providing more privacy to its users because it has to be end-to-end -end encrypted. encrypted. Right. right now, the only one of the three which is end-to-end -end encrypted is WhatsApp. Correct. Messenger is not end-to-end -end encrypted. Instagram DM is not end-to-end -end encrypted as well. Uh, but there has been some backlash, including claims that it will be a haven for criminals to privately message, message each other. Um, yes, this is true because a lot of... Um, I guess uh, movements to overthrow the governments all happen in encrypted messaging Terrorized, platforms. Uh, terrorism terrorism happened there as well. And also uh, criminals who are stalking on and also kind of like grooming children. Mm -hmm. Grooming in the sense that grooming here means that they are kind of like slowly telling the children that it's okay to be sexually abused. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, virtual, virtual sexual abuse and things like that. So these are these are real problems. Uh, there were also some parties that feared that monitoring of children would be harder as well because children can do whatever they want, and because there is no end, because there is end-to-end -end encryption, they can't see what's going on. We also can't forget the <clears throat> that one of the reason for this unification was that the American lawmakers at the time was pushing for Facebook to break up Correct. because it was getting too big and without proper competition. Uh, unifying the apps will actually make it that much harder to be broken up later on. So it has its own ulterior motives as well, Facebook. Um, this delay will give authorities around the world more time to present their cases against end-to-end -end encryption by citing unwatched criminal activities and child safety online. I guess, I mean, that's the thing. For me, after hearing all of this, that I, for me, I have two perspectives on this. There's the pros and cons to it. Essentially, you know, unifying the app, um, it's harder for them to break up. But then, like, you know, we are talking about encrypted messages. Yes, privacy is important. But when it comes down to things such as, like, terrorism, you know, uh, virtual, you know, abuse and stuff like that, especially on children, those are the kinds of things that people should take into regard. And mm. I mean, like, there should be a whole studies that actually done this as well just to actually to see whether is it a good approach or not mm. just to get a better understanding of it that's just my two cents of it yeah so one of the one of the suggestions that these um, organizations actually provided was that um, they have a very strong filtration against people they don't know people who don't know texting them yep so while that happens, um, then what happens is that you there is a, it's kind of like Instagram DM, right? You put a filtration there, you will not see it. Correct. And then um, while it's there, there is no end-to-end -end encryption. So then when it's no end-to-end -end encryption, when someone sends you something like something uh, that resembles sexual harassment or profanity or whatever, these text immediately gets blocked Block. out and removed out. And then uh, from people they don't know, so which means that Everybody who use this chat must have, must have to declare their age. And if some 50-year-old texts a 14-year-old, automatically the text will not go in un unless um, that person, that 14-year-old, adds that 50-year-old as a family member or something like that. Correct. So there are certain workarounds for this. Uh, but for me, the whole end-to-end -end encryption thing is a, it's a two side of the the coin. I mean, yeah, I agree with it. I don't agree with it. Um, yeah, I, I believe that there should be privacy with our text yep. all the time. But I also understand that um, a lot of terrorists have also used this to, you know, get a lot of things done under the noses of all the authorities as well. So uh, I guess my takeaway is it sucks to be meta. <laughs> 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 Tell me about it. I mean, like, I, I, I low-key kind of feel bad for them. The amount of backlash they're getting for all of this, like, mm -hmm. I, they can't seem to do, like, anything I do <laughs> seems to backlash on me. What should I yeah, do next? I can't get know? anything right. I can't do anything <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite sad, but, um, 
looking forward let's just see what actually what they have in store for us uh, for till 2023 yep. I'm actually really looking forward for it especially what improvements they want to do especially on the virtual world that's ridiculous yes I'm looking forward to that one alright next TikTok brings its app to the TV in the US TikTok brought its app to Europe last December and just expanded into US earlier this year it has recently announced expansion into Google and Android TV subscribers, Android Fire TV users, as well as LG and Samsung Smart TV owners. Essentially, users in the US can now watch TikTok from their big screen TVs. It's going to be the same vertical layout, this time with two big black boards on both sides. So, imagine you holding your phone, but it's additional two black boards around. Um, both of the sides. Perhaps TikTok wants kids to introduce its app and content to their older family members, but which kid would want to share their private private for you page to their parents? I mean, okay, um, let's just say this. Uh, some certain kids, you know, in real life, you see them, they're goody two shoes, but when it comes behind the camera, I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Completely different person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But... I, I, I'm having trouble trying to um, digest this concept because social media is a very private thing. Correct. And your TikTok for you page is different from my TikTok for you page. Exactly. Everybody's page is different, right? Because we have different consumption, we are attracted to different things and we like different things and therefore we see different things. And which kid would want to say to their grandparents or their parents, hey, this is TikTok, I love this content, have a look at it. I will share all I will share with you my account <laughs> and show you everything that I have been going on that has been going on with me in my life. Because TikTok knows more about us than we do about ourselves sometimes. True. Right? True. And it is a very vulnerable thing to do to log into your TikTok account on a private uh, sorry on a public TV. Their yeah, parents say, "What are you watching?" What is this? What is this bad language? Exactly. <laughs> what is this bad language? What is this kind of dancing that is, you know, wearing all these kinds of clothes and everything? Where is like their that? clothes? <laughs> not, not where is their clothes, but where, where is most of their clothes? <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, um, well, YouTube works well on a big TV because YouTube content, you can have a, like a special account that focuses on watching more proper or safe right. for safe for family content unless of course you said okay I will create another TikTok account that is used for safe for family content then yeah then it makes sense I mean like it made most sense with YouTube because you see not just let's just say one of if you like series you like dramas and stuff like that some of them they have web series which are actually quite interesting yes. you know yeah. it would make sense for youtube to hop into all of this but then with tiktok i mean i guess they are trying to milk as much as they can and see how they can expand their reach yeah and the scary thing about tiktok is that youtube does um it it tracks your behavior on it's it's called active tracking mm -hmm. in a sense that you have to click on the button to watch that show Hmm, okay. actively do that yep. right and once the show finishes it will recommend some stuff but most of the time nothing happens then yep. you have to click on the next show to watch the next one Correct. whereas TikTok is a by recommendation so you may passively be watching something that you are attracted to that you like some content that you like and TikTok is learning from that and you are not actively clicking on those videos Correct. right you're not like you don't have to click to watch it it's just there and then you watch it for more than like three to five seconds, TikTok says, oh, this guy's interested in this. I'll show them more of this. Yep. It's a very passive attraction thing. Correct. And then you start to build your For You page without even you knowing or actively trying to control what kind of content you want to watch. And yeah, to me, that's scary. TikTok is watching us. Even right now, from I was reading somewhere, they said they have their metrics whereby they see how long do you stay on the app. Like on, like let's just say, um, you're watching a video of a guy dancing probably two seconds mm. then you just shout then probably if I watch it like if let's just say it's five seconds they have that sort of metrics you yes. see how long are they going to be in that time you know and what's the brown straight line so I guess yeah, it's kind of scary like TikTok been watching over us even for me sometimes I'm addicted at times like when you watch it it's very hard to stop but then at the same time that fear you know 
you guys are watching me, you know. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so how I use TikTok is that um, I know that sometimes when I get on it, I will lose track of time. All right. So how I try to control it is I will try to make sure that whatever I gain, I watch on YouTube. Uh, sorry, on TikTok, it helps me learn something. Makes you a better person. Isn't rather than yeah, rather than you know just mindless and senseless funny stuff. I mean, I understand that sometimes we need funny stuff, right? All right. But if you have a good mix of educational content in there, then it you don't walk away learning nothing or losing your IQ points yep. or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really like my TikTok algorithm right now because the feed that I see is mainly on workout videos, yeah. art, uh, motivational, yeah. and as well as uh, some digital marketing tips here and there. Mm. And I like that algorithm because that's what I'm looking for yes. instead of people dancing here and there. Yes. I mean, it's entertaining until when you fall down. Then it's even more entertaining. But yeah. other than that, it, it gets it gets boring to a certain amount of yeah. time. You know. So for people who are who have not gotten a TikTok account, because whenever you open the TikTok app, all you see is rubbish and all you see is stuff that you're not interested in. Have a bit of patience. Correct. Live with it for three days. Maybe spend uh, ten minutes a day with TikTok and actively swipe away content that you don't want and actively watch content that you like. And after three days, you will see a dramatic transformation in the app and it suddenly becomes the app that you love. Yep. Give you the content that you really, really want to watch. That is how amazing TikTok's algorithm is. I downloaded TikTok just for the fun of it and next thing I get to know, I'm actually kind of liking it. That, like. Yeah, I quit TikTok three times <laughs> and I'm stuck with it now. And I love it. <laughs> Anyway, onward to our last news of the week. Twitter joins the live shopping hype. After Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and Pinterest, Twitter has finally bought, brought live shopping to its app. It's, essential, it's essentially a live streaming with a shoppable banner. So you have live streaming where people talking, let's say two of us are talking live, and we're trying to sell something. But then at the bottom half of the screen, you have a shoppable banner where you have showcasing products and everything. You have a tab that you can click to buy stuff as well. Uh, guests can actually watch live presentation of the products, ask questions via text, and so that we can answer you know you via text as well. And you can also buy these products. The concept itself works very well in other social platforms and all around the world. But seeing as Twitter is the least visual platform of the lot, because Twitter is about text. Correct. Sometimes you get some visual stuff, but Twitter is primarily about text, right? So it never kind of became a place where people can window shop for products yep. and doing this live shopping thing I think it will be a bit of a it, it be a bit of a hard sell for Twitter compared yep. to Pinterest Instagram and Facebook because these are more visual platforms and it's easy for them to sell stuff and yeah that's what I think I think um, Twitter is doing this because it's out of hype and they're just jumping on the bandwagon yeah they're jumping on the bandwagon and I fully disagree with this because it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. I mean like okay I know you're trying to jump on the bandwagon but essentially do remember what centric what centric platform are you in right now mm -hmm. you know you're very much of text you know when you talk about like a few other things when they was brought, bringing in journalism and stuff like that those are the good approach but then bringing in shopping doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. but at the same time for me I'm always open to new ideas and I'd like to see how they're going to integrate the shopping yep. to Twitter itself and you never know, you know. As long as it, if it works, it works. If it yep. doesn't, I mean, it's time to scrape off, you know. Yep. To, to be fair to Twitter, uh, do you know that Twitter is the only social platform now mm -hmm. that when you upload a high-resolution photo, it is not compressed? Yes. You get a high-resolution photo? Correct. So which means that if you're a photographer and you want to showcase high-resolution photography work, Twitter is the platform to do it. But that said... I'm still finding it very baffling that a lot of photographers are not getting into Twitter as, as, as much as they should. Yep. Where right now Twitter is moving into the NFT the, space. Yeah. Right. Very strong into the NFT space instead. So you get a lot of people who want to mint their collection and these people are showcasing all their stuff on Twitter and instead of other platforms. So it has become that kind of uh, place. But maybe maybe it's a good place for people to sell their nft work yeah true through live shopping so yeah well i guess we can see some way of it working twitter you heard that from sean right? he yes. called shots he you heard that shots from us you heard that from us and if it ever happens and you want to push it 
you don't have to pay us a lot of money. Just give us a shout out, right? You know, I we'll guess. Be, we'll be honored. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be so happy. <laughs> but you actually, yeah, I never thought of that. Uh, shopping, but with NFTs instead of selling other products. Exactly. I mean, you think about it, right? How they release NFT collections now. They open a Discord channel. Correct. They have a Twitter page. And then they just, you know, post the stuff there and then everything. And they said, okay, this is ready to be minted. And then, you know, this is the release. Go buy your stuff. And then when you mint it, usually it's by random. Yep. You have all these random ones. You put your bid, and then you randomly get a good one or rare one or a common one. And then you take that, you own it, and you know, however the price goes up is up to how the market is demanding for it. Yo, I'm actually I'm mind blown right now. Shopping makes sense for Twitter, you know. Yes, <laughs> maybe that's their plan all along. Probably, right? you, you can shop know. for you can shop for NFTs. So. So let's say we have a collection of uh, maybe 10 new NFTs of, um, uh, we can do an orangutan collection yeah. or a whale collection or a monkey collection or whatever, right? So we do that and then it's not just us showing the what, we can actually have a picture in picture where we talk about it and we, we actually describe each of the character, why this character has this, why this character the has background that, story background of story it. of it. Ah. Then when we launch it, then you know when we, you know when you guys can mint it, yeah. That's it. Let's, let's talk about that later, you know? <laughs> okay, let's take this off so that uh, these people don't hear do, it. Do, 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 <laughs> do. <laughs> Alright, um, Social Media Weekly Podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and more. Our full videos are available on YouTube and we post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. If you like Social Media Weekly, it would really help if you rate and review it on the podcast video of your choice and on YouTube so more can discover it. Social Media Weekly is on lookout for regular co-hosts to help us bring some depth to the show. If you're interested, simply drop me an email at sean, that is S-H-A-W-N, at virtualpeddlers.com. This is Social Media Weekly, episode 24th, November 2021. My name is Sean. And I'm Jay, and I bid you an adieu. See you next week. Bye. Bye.